For this video, we're gonna be discussing these special limits. But before we discuss this topic, I have a video that discusses the limit of transcendental functions and indeterminate forms. And if you want an in-depth discussion regarding that topic, kindly click the link in the description box. And from that video, we discussed the indeterminate form from which the denominator should not be equal to zero. Because as we know, having zero in the denominator makes our function indeterminate or undefined. And if it is zero, we need to think for possible ways on how to find the limit of the problem. But in our topic for this video, there are special functions that the limits still exist when the denominator is approaching zero. Let's have our number one. This is the limit of sine x over x as x approaches zero. The first thing that we need to do is to have a table of values from which we can set values for x that are approaching to zero. So we have these values and these values and they are all approaching zero. Then let's substitute the values of x one by one to our function. So if x is negative 2, the function is this. If x is negative 1, the value of our function is this. If this is the value of our x, this is the value of our function. If x is this, our function is this. Then let's have number 2. If our x is 2, our function is this. If x is 1, here is the value of the function. If x is 0 0.01, here is the value. If x is 0 0.0001, this is the value of our function. And as we notice, both directions from left and right, they are approaching specific number, and that is 1. And if we're going to look at the graph of our function, here is the graph. As we can see, here are the values of x that are approaching 0. So this is the one-sided limit from the left of 0 or less than 0. On the other hand, here are the values of our function as x approaches 0 from the right. And by evaluating the limit, the limit of sine x over x as x approaches 0 is equal to 1. Also, we have the limit of x over sine x as x approaches 0, this is also equal to 1. Let's have the second special limit, that is the limit of 1 minus cosine x all over x as x approaches 0. So the same thing that we did in our number 1, let's have first the table of values and set values for x that are approaching 0 from the left and from the right. And by completing our table of values, if x is negative 2, here is the value of our function. In this part, here, and here. From the right side, if x is 2, we have this value of our function. If x is 1, here, and here. And as we notice, they are both approaching a specific number, and that is 0. And if we're going to look at the graph of our function, here it is. Here are the values of our x from the left of 0. And here is the curve of our function. It is approaching 0. So this is one-sided limit from the left of 0. And on the other hand, we have these values of x that are approaching 0 from the right. And here's the graph of our function from the right of 0. And by evaluating the limit, we have the limit of 1 minus cosine x all over x as x approaches 0 is equal to 0. Also, if we're going to get the reciprocal of the function, the limit of x all over 1 minus cosine x as x approaches 0 is also equivalent to 0. Let's have our third special limit, and that is the limit of e raised to x minus 1 all over x as x approaches 0. So let's have the table of values first, and let's set values for 
x that are approaching to 0 from the left side and from the right side. So by substitution, if x is negative 2, here is the value of our function. If negative 1, if negative 0 0.01, if negative 0 0.0001, if x is 2, if x is 1, if x is 0 0.01, if x is 0 0.0001 and as you can see they are both approaching specific number and that is 1 and here is the graph of our function so as the values of x approaching 0 the curve of our function is approaching 1 from the left on the other hand here are the values of the x from the right of 0 and here is the graph of our function. And if you're going to notice, lahat ng graphs ng 1, 2, at 3 natin, meron tayong makikitang holes. Because that value of x makes our function undefined. That's why we have holes. But still, the limits exist in all of our special limits. So by evaluating the limit of our third special limit, we have the limit of e raised to x minus 1 all over x as x approaches 0 is equal to 1. Also, if we're going to get the reciprocal of the function, the limit of x all over e raised to x minus 1 as x approaches 0, this is also equal to 1. Now, let's have the summary of our special limits. So, the first one is the limit of sine x over x as x approaches 0 is equal to 1 and also its reciprocal. The second one is the limit of 1 minus cosine x all over x as x approaches 0. This is equal to 0. Also its reciprocal. And the third one is the limit of e raised to x minus 1 all over x as x approaches 0 is equal to 1. Also its reciprocal. Now let's answer some problems. Number 1. Evaluate the limit of sine 4x over 3x as x approaches 0. Since our given has sine, remember that the limit of sine x over x as x approaches 0 is equal to 1. So this will be our guide in answering our problem. So the first thing that we need to do is to check if it is indeterminate if we're going to do the direct substitution. Here, if x is equal to 0. So by direct substitution, we're going to have sine 4 times 0 over 3 times 0. And we're going to have 0 over 0, and this is indeterminate. Notice in our special limit that we have the same x in the numerator and denominator for us to have the limit of 1. So in our given, we need to make 4x and 3x the same. But since our numerator, sine 4x, is just one term, our goal here is to make our denominator 4x. So the best way is to multiply our given by 4 over 4. So where did I get 4 over 4? That is just the coefficient of our x in our sign. Then let's multiply. We're going to have 4 times sine 4x in the numerator. And in the denominator, we can write this as 3 times 4x. And as you can see, we have the same 4x in the numerator and in the denominator. So let's separate the two. We have the limit of 4 thirds times sine 4x over 4x as x approaches 0. And by evaluating, sine 4x over 4x is equivalent to 1. Therefore, our answer for this problem is 4 thirds or 4 over 3. Let's answer the example number 2. Evaluate the limit of sine of the quantity x plus 1 all over x squared minus 1 as x approaches negative 1. And as you can see, we have sine in our given. So remember that the limit of sine x over x as x approaches 0 is equal to 1. 
So from here, let's check if it is indeterminate if x is negative 1. So if we're going to do the direct substitution, negative 1 squared is 1. And 1 minus 1 is 0. So from here, let's observe the function that we have. From this, we can factor the denominator. And by doing so, we're going to have the limit of sine of x plus 1 all over x minus 1 times x plus 1. These are the factors of our x squared minus 1. And we can write this in this form. We have the limit of 1 over the quantity x minus 1 times sine of the quantity x plus 1 all over the quantity x plus 1 as x approaches negative 1. And by evaluating the function, this part is already equal to 1. And this part, we're going to have 1 over negative 1 minus 1, so times 1. So our answer here is negative 1 half. Let's answer our third example. Evaluate the limit of 2x minus 1 plus cosine 4x all over 5x as x approaches 0. Remember, since our given has cosine in it, we have to remember that the limit of 1 minus cosine x all over x as x approaches 0 is equal to 0. So if we're going to check if it is indeterminate, so let's just substitute 0 in our denominator. So we're going to have 5 times 0, that is 0. And if we're going to observe our problem, we can separate the fractions. This part and this part. And by doing so, we're going to have the limit of 2x over 5x plus negative 1 plus cosine 4x all over 5x as x approaches 0. And from this part, we can cancel x in 2x and x in 5x. Then if we're going to multiply the signs, because our goal here is to have 1 minus cosine x all over x in the part of our problem. So we have... The limit of 2 fifths minus 1 minus cosine 4x all over 5x. Because negative times positive, that is negative. And negative times negative, that is positive. And in this part, our goal is to make 4x and 5x the same. So we're going to take the coefficient of our x here. And multiply it to the numerator and denominator of this part. So we're going to have 4 over 4. Then let's multiply first. We're going to have the limit of 2 fifths minus 4 times the quantity 1 minus cosine 4x. And the denominator, we can write this in this form. We have 5 times 4x. And since we have 1 minus cosine 4x over 4x, we can have it as 0 by evaluating. So to make it more clear to you, let's separate the two, this part. We are going to have the limit of 2 fifths minus 4 fifths times the quantity 1 minus cosine 4x all over 4x. And by evaluating the limit, this part is equal to 0. So we're going to have 2 fifths minus 4 fifths times 0. And this part is already zero and our answer is two fifths and for our last example let's evaluate the limit of e raised to 5x minus 1 all over x as x approaches zero and in this part we should remember that the limit of e raised to x minus 1 all over x as x approaches zero is equal to 1 so our goal here is to have this pattern in our problem but first, let's check if it is indeterminate in direct substitution. And yes, if x is equal to 0, our function is indeterminate. So what we need to do is to have the coefficient of x here. And multiply it to the numerator and denominator of our function. Then by multiplying, we're going to have the limit of 5 multiplied by the quantity of e raised to 5x minus 1 all over 5x as x approaches 0. So by evaluating the limit, this part is going to be equal to 1. So our answer will be 5. 
And this is the end of this video. If you find this video informative, please don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Thank you for watching. God bless us all.